Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salati wa salam ashraf al mursaleen Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Immadadakum wa nazarakum sali ya Rasul al-Kareem ya Habib al-Azim An abdik al-Ajis al-Da'if wa miskeen wa zalim al-Jahad But for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Ati Allah Ati Rasul ulul anbi minkum Alhamdulillah that Allah gave us a life inshaAllah to which to see the opening of the holy month of Zulhaj inshaAllah coming in Sunday, Monday depending upon when they call for the Hajj. And uh, inshaAllah Allah dress us from its realities, bless us from its realities, 10 of the holiest days of our year-long journey into Divine the Presence and the reality of completion. And the, the journey of completion in which it's a journey towards the Divine, the Presence, completing the one year of moving into that reality and dressing and asking Allah to dress us and bless us and each of the tajallis of, of each month to dress us and bless us into the depth and the heart of Divine realities, into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and alhamdulillah that Allah dress the reality of the Hajj and that the heart is the Kaaba and that everything that we're asking to do on the outside, Allah reminding us that the greater reality lies within the servant. As an external reminder for all creation they look towards the outside goal and Ask that one day Ya Rabbi prepare us to be able to make our hajj, the physical hajj. And a result of having such a coordinates then the servant will busy themselves in the preparation for the hajj. That the reason the usul is there is to give somebody a point of reference that our, our religion, our path requires that we try if Allah gives us a mean to, means in which to make the hajj. So then our life is in preparation for that hajj that I want to go to the holy house, I want to go to the holy locations, I want to go through all of the rituals of hajj. And it's supposed to motivate the servants to prepare themselves, to purify themselves, to, to prepare their inner condition, outer condition to the extent of their belief and understanding. And Allah's great ni'mat, great blessings, great gift is when He teaches the servant and guides them towards the turuqs and spiritual paths in which they open for us an understanding that the greater hajj is inside. The greatest hajj is within the Kaaba that lies within the chest of mankind, the house of Allah in which Allah built. The external house in which men put together the bricks and stones and Allah sanctified that house with Al Hajj al Aswad, a heavenly stone from paradise and its depth of its reality. But the house in which Allah built and continues to build every time a creation of Bani Adam is created and brought into existence. Allah built that house, Allah built the reality by His two Divinely hands, His Qudra and His power, built the heart of that servant. And within that servant Allah blew from His Divinely power and gave that servant life. The immensity of, of that Hajj and the immensity of that Kaaba is nowhere in comparison nowhere in comparison to the external form. That which Allah created from His two hands and وَلَكَ الْكَرَامْنَ بَنِي Adam that Allah from Mayat al Kareem describes that we have honoured your creation, the creation of Adam and Eve. And because of that honour is the understanding is that Allah is fashioning the heart of that servant, the entire being of that servant Allah breathes into from a Divine breath to give that servant life, that is something that you can't even compare. 
that this is one that Allah made and breathed into it, gave it a Divine gift of life and the immensity of what it's able to uh, achieve. Then the turuqs come and teach, then perform your inner Kaaba, your inner Hajj and your whole life is and that's why every year in Muharram is the beginning. We step with our right foot asking, Ya Rabbi this is my hijra towards your Divine Presence. If I should have a life in which to reach the last and the twelfth month, the month of Hajj, alhamdulillah, even if I don't I'm making intention to reach to that reality and then that becomes a whole inner path of preparing for the Hajj. The Muharram is that I want in that year Ya Rabbi to live a life of no haram, no badness, no things that to oppose you and come against what you are in favour of and let my life to be clean so that I begin the preparation of my inner Kaaba, my inner reality and that your Divinely Presence to reside within my heart. We said that with the outside Kaaba what makes the Kaaba holy or not the bricks but that has to do with the reality of the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad which is present in that Kaaba. That the arwah and just the reality from the soul of Prophet is located in the physical Kaaba and as a result Nabi'een, all Nabi'een are coming with Sayyidina Muhammad Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin, all all the souls whom Allah gave that rank and those titles, they all want to be with Sayyidina Muhammad So the, the reality of the physical hajj is a hijra that all these souls are asking in the time of Zul Hajj that, Ya Rabbi let our souls to be with our most beloved. Let our souls to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad in the holy precincts, in the presence of that reality and as a result of the soul of Prophet in Mecca and in the Kaaba, in the reality of the Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin, as a result of that holiness that Allah will bring every Zul Hajj he ordered mankind to come to take the benefit of that association, the benefit of that eternal reality that has happened from all of eternity. It's not because they're coming, it's because the souls of those pious people are there. Allah then ordered for all others, make your hajj. For if one day you should be able to enter into those precincts, into that reality, that you be dressed by the soul of Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin and Allah says, this is the best of company and Allah's Divinely lights are with them. As a result of the barakah of that center, Allah asking for all of creation come, come to that reality to be dressed by that, to be blessed by that. Allah continues, that's why we started by saying that this is a ni'mah. Allah wants more than anything that we always seek out immense blessings. Allah doesn't want to hide these blessings. As a result of that reality Allah is, Allah is inspiring, go, go for the hajj, go for this, this blessing that this souls you don't understand what they're going to be dressed with, what I'm going to be blessing them with. As soon as hujaj enter into these areas they're being dressed by the lights not by the activities that they're doing. Not you going seven times you, you made Allah so miraculously happy that you've gone seven circles better than anyone can go seven circles. It's like you know, people think they've got a big accomplishment now they go with a go-kart back and forth to Safa and Marwa, woo, 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 back and forth. No, it's not our action, it's not the action that we're achieving something on Hajj. But what Allah is sending of realities there, Allah is then teaching they go, go seven times so that each time you go, Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, Shuhada wa Salihin, they dress you from your reality and what those realities are of, of every layer of what they're achieving, what's the reality of the Safa Marwa and opening of the Divine fountains of inspirations and realities within the heart. 
Oh, all the, the jamarat, all the things that we've talked about and we have in the, in the book The Secrets of Hajj, all of those because of the blessings and the immense realities Allah then gives us go and imitate. Turuqs come and teach us that we are merely imitating. That's why we start off by saying, An abdukul ajeezu ta'ifu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahal, that Ya Rabbi I'm nothing. And just by my act of imitation and because of the act of love that I have for this reality, dress me. Dress me and bless me from this reality, not for anything I think I am or anything I think I've done or I've accomplished. I've accomplished nothing Ya Rabbi, I'm asking only for my love, for the love of Your Divine the Presence, love of Sayyidina Muhammad and I'm imitating my shaykhs and my teachers who have taught me. And as a result of moving with that imitation Allah dresses and blesses from its realities and its haqqaiqs, not from what we think we achieve with our frail and, and s small physicality. Then the inner reality imagine, if that's the haqqaiqs or understanding, some of the understandings of the realities of the external, imagine then what insan is capable of as a gift from Divine the Presence. When they take up the tariqahs and Allah inspire them to take your path serious, take your path with all its realities and every everything that you want to accomplish one day you may figure out after 20 years or 15 years of accompanying these people of what this reality truly is and did you take advantage of that 10 years, 15 years, some 25 years, some 30 years people have accompanied shaykhs, did you take advantage of these realities? And then one day it comes to them the understandings of those realities. For insan to accomplish what Allah wants them to accomplish means their heart become filled with the reality of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why we're saying now the heart is much more powerful than the external Kaaba. The heart in which Allah built, when awliyaullah begin to fill your heart with the love of Nabiin, then they fill your heart with the love of Siddiqeen and they fill your heart with love of shuhada. And Allah allow them to make you from Salihin, that Allah raise the status of that servant because they have the immense love of Sayyidina Muhammad They have the lo immense love of all the Siddiqs, all the truthful servants whom are truthful with their deed and with their actions. And Allah made their whole life to be surrounded by shuhada. The people of mushahada whom their hearts are open, they can't sit and they can't stand anyone whose heart is not open. That's why they don't listen to other people, they don't watch other shows, they don't read other people's books. If whatever that person is teaching and their heart didn't open, well if it didn't work for them what's going to work for me? Just wasting my time. So this ni'mat and blessing that Allah gave that eat from the table of those whom their hearts are open because they have this category of the love of Nabi'een, love of Siddiqeen, love of shuhada. As a result of being with open-hearted people they're taught, ilma laduni wa hikmati bis salihin And as a result of the knowledge and the food they eat of wisdoms of haqqaiqs, no doubt the knowledge enters into their soul, they're small but sincere actions raise their status to be salihin and Allah inshaAllah dress them to be salihin. And as a result their hearts are being dressed by the reflection of that reality. So then when we understood only Allah, they are the reflections of the Kaaba and they are the walking living Kaabas upon this earth. That their heart is filled with that reality of the holy Kaaba. We say, what makes that Kaaba holy on Zul Hajj is the presence of Nabi'een. And because of that, all Siddiqeen are coming, all Shuhada are going, all Salihin are present. 124,000 of each of those ca categories are present in the Kaaba. That's why Zul Hajj becomes holy. 
because the immensity of the lights and these lights then mubashshiran are dressing anyone who's in that vicinity or even flew in for that intention or from a distance made that intention. That's why they teach us make your intention for Zul Hajj regardless if you're physically going to be there or not that we're intending to make Hajj this year and everyone is intending. We made intention for 12 months to reach to this Hajj. We didn't make the intention last week, we made the intention in Muharram. Give us the 12 months Ya Rabbi of a hijrah into your Divinely Presence. We've been walking through this desert for 12 months into this haqqaiq. So they're to be dressed from that. So awliyaullah are the living Kaaba and that's why they are called Kaabas and Qibla. Qibla because you don't pray to them but when you accompany them, follow them, listen to them, learn from them, they give you a sense of purpose and direction in your religion. Without it you have no idea where's Allah, where Sayyidina Muhammad you'd be spinning in a desert not understanding where you're headed to. As a result they are a very firm direction, they are a representation of Allah's Divinely Presence and the love and presence of Sayyidina Muhammad As a result of that love Nabi'een are in their heart, Siddiqeen are in their heart. Shuhada in their heart giving fires and direction to them and Salihin are all around them. The arwah of Salihin are continuously accompanying them. As a result of that they are the realities of the Kaaba. They are the walking and living Kaabas upon this earth in which Allah by means of their souls send blessings and dressings and immense illuminations and lights upon this earth. That's why they describe that Allah through this reality keeps the deen alive. Through the reality of these awliyaullah it keeps Islam alive, keeps us Islam fresh and continuously rejuvenating the soul because tariqahs are the soul of Islam. Islam is merely the body but the tariqah is the faith and the soul of Islam and the two together if we follow the turuqs they open for us maqam al-ihsan and the stations of perfection. We pray that Allah to dress us from these holy nights and prepare us for the arrival of Zul Hajj that we waited 12 months to get to its door and to its threshold. That Allah complete His ni'mat for this year upon our souls, upon our family and our communities for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad for the sake of all Ahlul Bayt, for the sake of all Ashab al-Nabi for the sake of all awliyaullah fi samahi wa fil ardi ya Rabbi, wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.